Hi everyone, my name is Richard Perry and I'm the market analyst at Antip Markets. I've been doing some Brexit uh, work and uh, this is my latest video on the uh, Brexit debate. Um, last time I looked at the advantages and disadvantages, looked at the pros and cons of the, um, of the both camps and uh, now I'm going to look at the market impact. What actually is Brexit going to do for the market? Um, there's six factors that I've sort of identified here. Starting off with the Bank of England, what is the impact going to be on the Bank of England monetary policy? Because We've got some the potential for some significant downside move in growth, but also potential for inflation as well. And that sort of gives you uh, or gives the Bank of England a very difficult situation to try and handle because that is two contrasting actions on monetary policy normally. So normally you'd react to negative growth by cutting interest rates or loosening monetary policy. But if you've got inflation increasing, you would normally act to increase interest rates or tighten monetary policy. So there's a there's a difficult um, quandary for the Bank of England and certainly according to the, the meeting minutes um, from last meeting would suggest that they are already discussing this. What actually would be the impact on sterling, the potential for sterling to significantly depreciate as um, as the uh, the market uh, tries to uh, reassess the, uh, the value of, uh, of sterling and the value of the economy, that would put pressure on the uh, downside to sterling and also how would that actually go forward to impact on other forex majors such as the eurozone what would be the, the economic impact on the euro zone because there would be a potential for a negative shock would that push the ecb into further monetary policy action uh, in terms of loosening would it also have the act of um delaying further rate hikes for the states would uh, a Brexit therefore mean that uh, the dollar would strengthen and therefore that would be deflationary for the, uh, for the US and uh, therefore would that uh, sort of mean that um, sort of interest rate increases would be kicked further into the long grass by the Fed. What would be the impact on uh, equity markets? Well that would be an interesting one because the initial impact I think across UK assets is likely to be negative due to the uncertainty and um, you're likely to see um, potential for uh, the FTSE 100 coming off quite sharply and uh, speaking about maybe 10% to the downside um, but could it actually there actually be winners and certainly on a relative basis there'll be outperformers and underperformers you're looking at your outperformers in, in the fact that 70% um, of the UK uh, revenues are actually derived abroad. So anyone um, generating revenue abroad, when you translate that back into sterling, you actually get a benefit from the depreciated sterling. Also, anyone generating um, dividends paid in dollars, uh, such as BP and Shell, um, that would also be um, sort of benefiting from the, uh, or the, the uh, shareholders would benefit from the dividends sort of being translated back into sterling. So all these aspects could lead to some individual performances um, uh, and uh, just differentials in the event of a Brexit. What would be the impact on UK gilts? Well, you could have the prospect of a credit rating downgrade. Moody's have already warned that uh, we could see one, um, but uh, what would also S&P and Fitch, the other two main ratings agencies, do for their credit rating? So that's uh, an impact that if you see a credit rating downgrade, you could see downward pressure on bonds and that would push yields higher. And also what would happen on house prices? Well, this is always an interesting one because again, as I said earlier, uh, asset prices are likely to come under pressure on UK assets, but um, that would like that would drive uh, UK house prices down. But in the long term, could it actually be a buying opportunity because you'd likely to see um, the shortage in housing stocks due to the shortage of labour potential um, in, the, in the house builders? And that could drive up um, the house prices through a lack of supply. But also international investors could find that um, the de significant depreciation in sterling, which could be as much as 20%, could actually drive an opportunity to make um, houses uh, that are bought from abroad into the UK uh, would actually become relatively cheaper. So all these different aspects on, um, on uh, asset prices as well. So lots going on. Um, what I've got on the website is uh, a lot of, uh, of, um, of data and um, of reports that I've written. I've uploaded three now. I've got a couple of videos on. We've got a survey that you can take, which uh, could find you um, sort of deciding whether to vote, uh, remain or leave. And also, uh, I'm going to be holding a Brexit webinar for um, the uh, June the 15th at 11 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I wish you, um, I hope you could uh, join me in that webinar. And um, with that in mind, I wish you good luck through your trading throughout this Brexit. 
um, debate because there's a lot of volatility and uh, sterling is certainly one trade that is um, incredibly volatile and uh, I wish you good luck in your trading throughout that and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.